the Spirit. Amen. Just like there was only 300 men that were able to do incredible things, just even though we're small, but as long as Jesus is among us, that's the main thing. Amen. That's right, brother. Today, um, I'll be sharing a message, a message that I think we need to think about. But before we do so, can I ask all of you to please bow our heads and let us have a word of prayer. Our wonderful and merciful Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you because you have been with us along the way. You have been with us in your wonderful Sabbath. And Heavenly Father, we may say that we have been blessed along the way. And Heavenly Father, today you have renewed your grace to us. Because today we are able to see a new day. We're still breathing. We're still doing our best. And Heavenly Father, all those things are uh, testimonies of your grace. And now as we gather here together, Heavenly Father, I beg and pray that your Holy Spirit will be with me. May it not be me speaking to your people, Heavenly Father, because I know that I'm just a child. I don't have the experience or the knowledge enough to speak to those people. But one thing that I know, I know that if Jesus is the one speaking out, your people will be blessed today. Amen. Heavenly Father, may you be among us. I ask all those things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. I remember last year, um, we were involved in... Um, in the Hope Manila program. And I remember that when we were assigned to a particular church, and there was a friend of mine who was telling us a testimony. He said that once he was walking with his friend, and while they were walking, um, they were actually heading for um, a program on a Thursday night in the church, and they saw that there was that woman who was struggling with a lot of books. She was holding a lot of books. And uh, those books fell down. And I remember that, that this friend of mine, he saw this and he was like, let's go help the woman. And the other comrade looked at him and said, no, why would we help her? We're heading to church. And that was the statement that he mentioned. He's like, no, 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 we're going to church. She can handle herself alone. And when she was telling me this, this particular event that happened in his life. I remember also there was a time when I was assisting a Sabbath school lesson. And one of them was speaking about how to help out your, your brother. And he mentioned that once he was driving in a highway and uh, one of the tires became flat. And for those who are familiar with highways, if your tires are flat on the highway, it's going to be quite hard, actually, to change it, especially if you don't have uh, an extra tire. And while he was standing there waiting, praying, asking God to help him out, and there was another car coming. And the brother asked, what's going on? And he explained his problem. And the man said, well, don't worry. I'll be driving you to the closest place where you can get a tire, and I'll even pay for you. And when... He, this, the, the brother that was explaining this story that happened to him, one of the sisters said, well, I'm pretty sure that this man was not a Ventus. When he said, I mean, when she said this statement, I was a little bit shocked, taken aback by, by this statement. Yeah. If it was probably somebody from another denomination, I would have probably said, probably she, the person doesn't know, doesn't know who the Seventh-day Adventists are. But actually that statement was made by a Seventh-day Adventist. And now, this made me wonder. We are quite, we observe the Sabbath. We have so many incredible things that make us unique. But what about the week, during the week? Does worship on the Sabbath, does the way we deal with our brothers, our sisters during the week, does it affect our worship in the Sabbath? So this made me wonder. And when we're talking about Sabbath, many times the verse that comes in mind, it's Isaiah 58, 58, and we start reading verse 13. We start saying, if because of the Sabbath you turn your foot from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, then you will take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. And most of the time, those are the verses that we read. But unfortunately, many times we forget to look at the verses that come before. And now, it's like this. When we have, uh, for those who are familiar with um, statistics, 
if you have a volume two of a book, you cannot just start reading the volume two and you don't know about the volume one. Or if you're taking a class and you know that there's a prerequisite for this class, you cannot just jump like this and you forget about the prerequisite, the class that you have to take before. So here I want to invite you to look at this verse in Isaiah 58, verse 3. Here we see that the people of Israel were asking a question, questions. They were asking God, why? Why have we fasted and you do not see? Why have we humbled ourselves and you do not notice? So they started asking themselves. They know that they're praying. They know that they humble themselves. They fast. But unfortunately, they observe that God do not notice what is going on. And I want to ask you this question. Have you ever sometimes felt that even though on the Sabbath you do everything, you feel like you're observing the day of the Lord as you should be, but unfortunately you feel like the blessing that comes in the Sabbath, you, don't, you do not have it. Personally, uh, to, for me to be honest with you, sometimes this happens to me. Sometimes I feel that even though that I go to church on Sabbath, I do those things, but I feel like the blessing that comes on the Sabbath day, I do not have it. What was the reason? Why did the Israelites felt this way? Well, God gave them an answer. If you start reading in verse 4, it says there, Behold, you fast for contention and strife, and to strike with a wicked fist. You do not fast like you do today to make your voice heard on high. So here they realized God was telling them that you fast for contention, you fast for strife, they realized that there was actually division among them. And while they fight with each other during the week and they come on the Sabbath or probably on the day of the feasting and they're praying, praying while they know that they have fight with another member. And if we even go on verse 3 and we look at the last part of the verse, it says that behold on the day of your fast, you find your desire and drive hard all your workers. So here those people that say that they will be fasting, they will be praying. At the same time, they are fighting with their workers. They are making their lives hard. So now the question that I asked at the beginning, does the way we act during the week affect the way we worship on Sabbath? So now when you look at verse 5, it goes on to say, Is it a fast like this which I choose? A day for a man to humble himself? Is it for bowing one's head like a reed and for spreading out sackcloth and ashes as a bed? And in verse 6, God gave them the answer. Is this not the fast which I choose to loosen the bonds of wickedness, to undo the bonds of the yoke, and to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke? Is it not to divide your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into the house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. So this is what God was telling them. You're fasting while you're forgetting about the brother that does not have bread in his house. While you're forgetting that those, they have people outside that do not have clothes. And you have and you're not helping them out. And this made me realize that as Seventh-day Adventists, we need to change our mindset. Many times when we look at how people look at us, they view us as the ones that are considered as the holy ones. The ones that keep the Sabbath. And I think this is an incredible thing. We have the Sabbath. But unfortunately, I want to ask you, are we acting as Seventh-day Adventists in the week also? Are we showing God's love in the week? Do we help out those people that we see out there that do not have food? We see them. Do we share our bread with them? Do we share our clothes with them? Do we show God's love to them? And today I want to tell you this. Today is Sunday. And possibly there will, be, there will be coming a Sabbath pretty soon. I want this to be encrypted in your heart. To be in your mind. That as you continue this week. As you prepare yourself for the Sabbath. As you prepare your heart for the Sabbath. I want you to do God's will as he puts it. That during this week. You show his love to your brothers. Amen. That you show his love to others. Amen. It can be in either form. It can be just by smiling to a brother. 
It can be just by sharing something with a brother. It can be just by lifting up a brother. If you see that he's down, you tell him God loves you. Amen. Or it can be just by looking at him, you see that the brother is struggling with a lot of books. You say, can I help you out with this? And if we say that we are people that believe in God, that want to sanctify the Sabbath, during the week, I want to tell you that your heart needs to be sanctified. Amen. I wish that as we continue our Christian journey, as we continue to make sure that we observe God's holy day, Amen. that our hearts may be sanctified and we may do God's will during the week. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, for this uh, 